or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally wrapping up my December reading month. It's coming a few kind of weeks later than usual. I had so many videos to post, you know, with the end of 2021 and the start of 2022. Um, if you haven't already, you know, like, please feel free to go and see uh, the stats of 2021, how many books that I read, and my plans for 2022, which are very exciting. But today we are talking about the six books that I read in December 2021, and there was only six. Um, that is a great reading month. I thought uh, I'm back to my like slightly more normal reading pace, you know, for me, normal for me. I think that when I joined booktube, like my reading went massively up. And this felt like a bit more relaxed and I do feel like I think there was a week that I didn't read that much. So just generally I feel very pleased um, by how actually chill I took it. Uh, but I still managed six books. Some of them were really short and some of them were a bit larger. And I also kept going with a few extra books that have been pushed into January TBR. But generally very pleased. As you may be have seen in my December TBR, I think there's only really two books on my TBR. And they were Middlemarch and The Master Margarita. I did end up reading The Master Margarita, but I didn't finish Middlemarch. As of filming this video, however, I have finished reading it. And you'll have to come back in my January wrap-up to see um, and hear about my thoughts. But spoiler alert, I loved it, especially the second half, which was much faster to read. <laughs> Um, but yes, let's dive into the books that I read. The first book that I read in December was the first in the Roswell High series. Uh, I think it was called The Outsider and that's by Melinda Metz. That was a bit of a blast from the past, but it was a very short and fun read. And I just really kind of enjoy diving back into that kind of world because it was one of my favorite TV shows growing up. Um, so it was, yeah, it was kind of cool. And I believe that these books were written pre-TV show or like maybe for the TV show. So an interesting kind of comparison of the storylines and the characters, slightly different, some for the better and some not so much. Um, and one of the things, um, that I was really disappointed with with the series is that actually in the book, Liz, the main character is actually Latina. And I was just like, they've completely erased that in a TV show. Um, it was a 90s, but still, still disappointed. Uh, I don't really have anything more smart to add about this book. It was just a really short thing that I found my library app and I just decided to read. And I think I just read it like on the first day of December. Um, on the second day of December, though, I also read another short book, which was Tiny Moons by Nina Mingya Pauls. So this is a nonfiction kind of very short essay it's not really a collection because i feel like it has like a narrative um throughout but it's just really sweet i started it earlier in 2021 and then in one of my videos i asked people to vote for which book that i hadn't finished in 21 should i read in december and i think brooke voted for it and i literally picked it up like that night or like the next morning whatever and read the whole thing because it's really short and i ended up loving it the intro, which is why I started reading earlier in the year, hadn't actually impressed me or interested me that much, I found, which I think is a little bit disappointing for the start of a book. However, like the, the entirety of the book was so good. And it's a mixture of memories regarding food and relationships. Um, her year studying kind of abroad in Shanghai um, and all of the amazing food that she eats and it was so well described like she made me so hungry for dumplings and all kind of Asian food that I've never tried before and actually um, I think the next day my husband and I ordered a bunch of dumplings from our local kind of Chinese restaurant and uh, that was delicious <laughs> on the kind of similar note the winner the actual winner when I asked people to vote, I believe it was on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vaughn. I added that to my January TBR, if you've seen that video, and I, I've started reading it uh, earlier this week, so I'm hoping I'll be able to finish it in January. Then I read The Master Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. It's a kind of Russian literary classic from the 20th century, and it's, I've heard only great things about it. It was actually a good friend of mine who gave me this book many years ago for my birthday. I think it was her favorite book. So I finally got to it. It was... The one word that I would use is weird. <laughs> so it's 
very smart, very sardonic. It's very much part Christian philosophy, part satire and criticism of the Soviet state. So there's a lot to unpack about this read. And when I finished it, I closed it and I was just like, I really didn't know what to think. And I feel like it's one that's going to be really good for potentially literature class or a book club, because I think like I really wanted to talk to someone about this book when I finished it because it was so bizarre and had so much to it um, that I think it's a book made for discussion, basically. In this book, we follow technically like two timelines or two like settings. The first one is the arrival of the devil in Moscow. And that's kind of like, um, well, I've been reading about it and I can kind of see why. It's like almost like a criticism of like the atheist state uh, or atheist propaganda and erasing Jesus as a historical figure and obviously it's kind of the dichotomy of, uh, of good and evil of God and the devil obviously people don't believe in the devil because they don't believe in God in this context I mean so it very interesting <laughs> and that's kind of parallel with the storyline of Pontius Pil no Pontius Pilate <laughs> so I was going to say it the wrong way again um, of Pontius Pilate uh, when he did his trial of Jesus of Nazareth and I feel like I lost maybe a little bit of that narrative because I'm not a very informed person when it comes to religion and um, even though I guess I grew up in a very Christian Catholic society in Montreal but I very much didn't kind of absorb that and my parents were very much like agnostic so I don't know that much about the historical aspects or even the biblical text so I feel like some of it may have gone over my head but still look very interesting as a philosophical kind of criticism and questioning and you know it really really it's a book that makes you think just utterly and completely yeah a fascinating read uh if you've read it I would love to hear what you thought because I think it's a book that warrants a conversation <laughs> On a lighter note, I then listened to the audiobook for A Far Love Story by Lonely, and that was just, I thought it was a really lovely love story. <laughs> um, it's very much almost like a Romeo and Juliet of like food and Vietnam, and I love how much it highlighted the journey and experience of Asian Americans, but also of uh, Asian immigrants to America as well as like first generation immigrants um, second generation with the children and the expect the different expectations um, for the children's lives and dreams and like you know stability and all of that that it's such a fabulous way of highlighting that and I guess highlighting the differences but also everyone it's such a pure love and just they just want the best you know for them and I thought that that was really beautifully done it is very much so about food as well, so a bit like, uh, I think it was in the same vein of kind of like Tiny Moon, where I was like very hungry after reading this book. Because the two main characters uh, is a boy, Bao, and a girl, Lin, and they are kind of the main love interest to each other, and they are both part of like, you know, um, not feuding families, but um, competing restaurants and families, um, and they both unite through that and through the expectation on their pair from their parents and their family history and throughout the whole thing you really see them like develop their dreams like Bao I think I really love the way that he started talking about food because that's so important to him and he knows it so well having grown up in the uh, food industry so yeah that was so beautifully done and Lin does more like the art and the drawing of the food of the restaurants and she wants to become an artist and she is an artist and that's something not as accepted in this um, these immigrant communities. So yeah, just generally I thought it was a really lovely read. They're kind of really charming teenagers. Their relationship's lovely. Um, so are their friendships. It's like the family stuff that's really heavy because it's so real. I did think like the one thing about it is that I think it wraps up way too quickly. And it's not very satisfying, I have to say. Like generally the book was so good and the voices are so strong of the two characters and I love the way that it just goes between their point of views but yeah the way it wraps up it's quite like big deal family drama that is wrapped up really quickly and I wish there had been a bit more to that 
but generally I definitely recommend it. It's really, it's really good. Then I finally finished an arc that I had through NetGalley, which was A Woman Made of Snow by Elizabeth Gifford. And I requested that because, uh, well, last year, in 2020, that's two years ago now, in 2020, I had read uh, Gifford's last book, The Lost Lights of St. Kilda, and it was one of my favorite books of that year. I absolutely loved it. It was so, it was just so beautiful. And, and I do love books based in Scotland. It was just, yeah, it portrayed the relationships and the Scottish rugged beauty really well. So in this book, we follow two different timelines. And I think Gifford really likes to do that. Uh, she always has like these different timelines or settings or point of views. And there's always like a big secret. So the main timeline is a woman who moves in um, to castle owned by her husband's family. And it's, it's kind of in the post Second World War era. And it's based near St Andrews. I don't think the castle is real, but it's kind of in the setting of East Coast of Scotland. And when she's there, she's trying to help uncover the secrets of her husband's family because there's some lineage that has kind of not disappeared, but it's really unclear what happened to them and really who's the mother of who and like what's going on. Uh, and then in parallel, we follow the timeline of those people. So I want to say it was like the great great grandfather or something and um what happened to him and his journey into the arctic and to i guess when i want to say like canada but it may have been was it pre-canada uh, anyway it was a really interesting storyline um just as a complete as a whole with you know the secrets and you follow like what happened and you slowly slowly put together what happened just with like with the character who's trying to uncover the secrets and it was really interesting the way that she brought in like first nation experience and like all of that kind of racism and prejudice that used to exist well it used to let's be honest here but it was just really beautiful um the way that she's weaving all of these different things but to me it just wasn't as good as the lost Lights of saint hilda i didn't love it as much i think i didn't connect with the characters as much either it felt less poignant and also at times a lot more like disjointed and that can happen in multiple timeline um books but yeah this one there was something about it that i just to me didn't completely click um but i still thought it was a lovely read especially yeah uh, if you like historical fiction, it kind of has a double historical fiction because like the current timeline is really in the, um, I want to say it's 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s maybe, something like that. Generally, I'm glad that I read it and I kind of want to read more of Gifford's novels. I have to go and I think she had two or three novels before that. So I'll definitely look that up because I think she is a really good writer. But yeah, I would definitely recommend The Lost Light of St. Kilda. Finally, the last book that I read in December was Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. And by read, I mean I started it in for nonfiction November, so I finished it in December. And it was really, it was so good. It is a collection of essays, I think taken mostly from talks and kind of publication that she made. And I think that it was still so, so deeply relevant. And I think that's why for me this was a five star read because. Like some of the stuff feel like it could it was written last year or this year so yeah very relevant very powerful i thought some of the essays are like personal travel that she's done which i thought is two once when she goes to russia and one when she goes to i want to say dominica and or is it granada anyway in the caribbean and the island where her mother was from and those two were really great like it mixes history and travel and obviously everything that she's known for in terms of interne intersectional feminism and like talking about the racism that she's um, experienced or that the people experience like um colonialism like just spot on there's a conversation that she had as well uh, with adrian rich which was really really good um and just interesting to hear them not hear them read them talk about stuff that's so important to like feminists today still um and i liked i really liked the way that this was edited and constructed because some of the essays are referred to later on so it's really important i think to read it in order 
because then you kind of know what they're referring to when, when you're reading on to the later ones. I especially liked um, her, you know, seminal work, The Master's Tool Will Never Dismantle the Master's House. I think it's just such an important work. And I love, love, love the way that she talks about how we need to acknowledge our differences as people, but also look at the fact that that's also a way that we're united in our differences and that those are beautiful things that make us like this diverse society that we are and I just yeah loved her point of view and her experiences and just the way that she wrote as well was very I think relatable and accessible so a big recommend like across the board for anyone who's looking to kind of I guess learn more about feminism especially like, I mean, from her, like, she talks a lot about, like, as a black lesbian and the, the different ways in which she was um, discriminated against. So, uh, very, very powerful voice and important voice. So, these were the six books that I read in December. A really good reading month, really bizarre. <laughs> I'm very aware, you know, from like feminist essays to Russian literature to Roswell. But I, yeah, I had a good time. I think I, I enjoyed actually all of those. And I think they were just really fun and some of them weird and some of them so smart and insightful. And it's just, yeah, it was a good reading month. I'm really glad that I took the time to look at those. And, and obviously we are, what, nine, ten days into January now. And I'm, you know, renewed energy with new different books. And I'm looking forward to explore more. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't hesitate to let me know what you read in December, what you recommend, and hey, see you back. Bye!